may not know it, but right now there's an international race to be the first to provide space tourism. Various companies are trying to overcome the two big issues holding it back, gravity and money. And there's a chance the solution to breaking out of the atmosphere without breaking the bank is being held by a British company. One, zero, to blast out of the atmosphere, rockets and shuttles need to carry masses of heavy rocket fuel, usually liquid oxygen and hydrogen, which is carried in tanks. When it's burnt up, the tanks are jettisoned to save weight, leaving only part of the launch vehicle making it out of the atmosphere. This makes putting hardware in space an incredibly expensive business. It's a problem that has made space tourism out of the question and is restricting important space exploration. But it may soon be a chapter in a history book, thanks to the work of rocket scientist Dr. Helen Weber and the team at Oxfordshire-based Reaction Engines, as they are attempting to make the exploration and development of space more affordable. So, Helen, is it true that you're trying to develop a new type of engine that will propel us into space in the future? That's correct. If we had something more like an aircraft, which we could take off horizontally from a runway, fly into space and return in one piece, that would make the system far more practical and the cost of getting stuff into space would be much reduced. Could you fly up then in a normal aeroplane? No, you couldn't. An aircraft would take you so far, but then as you climb up out of the Earth's atmosphere, your source of oxygen is depleting and that's what a jet engine uses to produce thrust. Whilst the lack of oxygen in the upper atmosphere stops jet engines being the complete solution, an air-breathing engine is at the heart of the plans for their conceptual space plane, Skylon. Helen is a major part of the team, developing the revolutionary new engine that will propel it. This is a, a model of, of what we call the Sabre engine. It stands for Synergetic Air Breathing and Rocket Engine. It's a combined engine system, a hybrid engine system. It's a rocket engine first and foremost. Mm -hmm. It's carrying liquid oxygen on board for when it needs it, for when, we're, when we've come out of the Earth's atmosphere and right. we need to accelerate that launch vehicle up to orbital velocity. The uniqueness of this engine is that in the early part of the trajectory, we're using the source of oxygen from the atmosphere, and that enables us to save weight, not carry as much oxygen as we need to make it from the ground up to orbital velocity. OK. It's a rocket engine that can breathe air. When jets take in oxygen from the atmosphere, they pressurise it and use it to burn aviation fuel. The resulting combustion creates enough thrust to propel an aeroplane through the sky. In order for Skylon to make full use of its oxygen breathing phase, it needs to reach a velocity of over 3,500 miles per hour, five times the speed of sound before reaching the outer atmosphere. But there's a reason why air breathing engines don't already go that fast. As you fly to faster and faster speeds, when that air comes into the engine, it's brought basically to a halt. Now all that velocity, all that kinetic energy is then at that point transformed into pressure and temperature mm -hmm. and the air is then at a temperature that's over a thousand degrees celsius the real problem is we've got an awful lot of air that we need to cool very very quickly so we're talking about transferring heat equivalent to the cooling of a nuclear reactor without a super sophisticated heat exchanger the engine would melt Heat exchangers are not a new concept, they're everywhere around us, in computers, fridges, freezers and even mounted on our walls in the form of radiators. So this is just like a radiator in your house, but in reverse. Hot water normally goes into your radiator. We're going to put cryogenic liquids through our radiators and cool down the air. Simon is a development engineer working alongside Helen. Cryogenic liquids are essentially just really cold liquids and he's using nitrogen to demonstrate how the heat exchanger works because it turns from a gas to a liquid when below minus 196 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, just in a matter of seconds, the air has been cooled from room temperature right down to sort of sub-zero temperatures. The heat exchanger is able to cool extreme temperatures quickly because it's made up of tens of kilometres of tiny tubes, giving it a massive surface area for the hot air to pass over. 
and the more surface area the air passes over, the quicker it can cool. It's a very efficient heat exchanger, all of these compact, lightweight tubes. And the trick is being able to manufacture something like this, the kind of weight levels that are acceptable for a jet engine. Right. Right now, Helen and Simon are trying to prove that they can cool the amount of air they need to to make the engine viable. And it could be 10 years before it is fully developed. But then, its effect on our lives could be massive. It's great to see. Hmm. Obviously, you know, these go faster than normal aeroplanes. Mm -hmm. Could these sort of replace aeroplanes? Could we travel faster around the world? You could. If there was a market for it, you could use this type of engine in its air breathing mode to actually travel at five times the speed of sound around the world. First and foremost, though, it would enable us to have a reusable launch vehicle, which is absolutely essential if we want to cut the cost of access to space and actually make getting things into space less wasteful. Your job title, rocket scientist, I think that's really cool. Are there lots of women doing your job? Well, they're not lots. Um, I hope there'll be more in the future. But I always wanted to be an astronaut, so I was always excited by space. And I knew that I had to study hard at maths and physics to be able to do that. And I went on to university to do aeronautical engineering. Is that the same path you took, maths and physics? I did a BTEC national diploma, so a bit more hands-on, uh, not quite so academic. I eventually went on and did a mechanical engineering degree as well. Um, but I did that in parallel with work experience here. Well, that's really interesting interesting to hear because you don't really think of doing work experience at somewhere they do space stuff and yeah. like rockets. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic opportunity. I think in your career to have a project that's innovative and that's something for the future is really important. So every day you come into work, you know that you're working on something that could influence, you know, the future of mankind. With the UK space sector already one of the fastest growing industries in the country, the success of the British Sabre engine could send it into hyperdrive. If that happens, there'll be more and more opportunities for those inspired by that great adventure they call space exploration.